Hi everybody. Okay, let me just fix the tripod thing. Nope, still going down. There, I think that is good. Okay, let me know if you can hear me or if I need to grab my microphone and I'll check on my laptop whether I'm live. Hi! Okay. <laughs> okay, good. You can hear me. Good. Yay! Thanks for joining everyone. Okay. Um, I'm going to keep my laptop here so I can see the comments better because on my, I'm recording on my phone because, um, my phone is better than my laptop webcam. Um, but as soon as a comment pops up, they just disappear again. So anyway, hi everybody. <laughs> so last week I took a week off, which was really, really nice. Um, and, um, if you watched the episode before that, so two weeks ago, you'll know that I plan to finish three things. Um, and I finished neither of those. So <laughs> good morning, Christy. Hi. Oh, hi, Brigitte. Oh, it's good that, uh, YouTube remembered that you are the moderator. So I don't have to, um, do that again. Yes. Hello. So yes, last time. Um, I was planning to have my Spectre sweater finished by now, <laughs> my, uh, pixelated cardigan and, uh, my scrappy socks. And I finished neither of those. So what do you want to see first? Um, yeah, I'm just going to leave my clipboard here. What do you guys want to see first? <laughs> what are you most excited to see? I know what I'm most excited to show you. <laughs> Spectre! <laughs> yeah, Spectre? <laughs> okay, okay, I'm gonna show you guys my Spectre sweater because, yes, that is the thing that I want you to show you guys most. Spectre, Spectre! <laughs> okay, now, do you remember where I was? Um, <laughs> This doesn't really show me uh, or show you guys. It was about, what do we say, 75% done? So hi, everyone. Thank you for joining. <laughs> uh, so I had finished. No, I have not. Um, I was about, you know, um, let's say 80% done with the body. And then I had one sleeve up until the same point, I think. And then one sleeve not started at all. Um, and now we have some ribbing, cast off ribbing, yes, not only on the body, but also on one sleeve, yay! <laughs> and the other sleeve is on the needles, so, okay. I was actually thinking if I should wear it today, but I would be um, afraid of losing any stitches. Um, what is the right side? There. All right, I'm gonna scoot back a little bit. Here it is so far. Oh, let me catch those threads. Ta-da! <laughs> yes, I'm really, really happy with it so far. It seems as if um, there's going to be no hem flipping, which is nice. Um, so sometimes if you change through the ribbing for a sweater, that's going to flip up. And uh, this one just looks nice and relaxed. Um, even before blocking. So thank you guys for all of your nice comments. <laughs> I can't wait to wear this. Um, 
So I am knitting the second sleeve um, and I am up to color 16 and um, yeah, I still have to go to color 24. And for the body, let me just check my notes. <laughs> I've tallied all of the um, rounds that I do for each color. And uh, for the body, I um, I was able to do one round of the very last color. One round. <laughs> and then the bind off. Um, actually, I'm not sure. Yeah, I think it's, I think it's all right. Um, but for the sleeves, I was able to do quite a bit more. Um, I think this was the last color and then it wasn't long enough yet so I went back to the very first color because um oh I should tell you the yarn I'm using is uh Walnut Fähre um by Sylvia a Dutch indie dyer and uh, this was her advent uh, calendar which uh, consists of 24 colors and each of those uh, fades into the next and it was also that color 24 fades back into color one um so when i was pretty much done with color 24 on the sleeves it still wasn't the length that i wanted um so i just went back to color one um let's see so um is this color 24? Yes. So this is color 24, the last one, and this was the very first one. Yeah. And then it faded into this, and that was what I used for the neck. Um, yeah, but the colors are just stunning. <laughs> Come on, guys, hit the like button. <laughs> I love it. Um, <laughs> Um, yes, and uh, yeah, and who said that? Uh, the pop of orange, yes, I love it too. Um, my necklace, yeah, I'm usually not a big orange fan, but uh, I just love this, and um, I do think that the gold section here and the gray is my favorite, so I'm happy that that is, um, next to my face because this is, you know, most visible on the sweater. Um, so for the yoke, you want to use the colors that you like most. So that worked out very nicely. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and yes, this is the Spectre sweater pattern by Hohi Locatelli. Um, it's a wonderful pattern. Um, I, wanted to knit size large but um, because my gauge was super tight I am knitting size 3XL so I'm knitting three sizes up but only because my gauge was so tight um, I did not want to go up a needle size because I don't like it when I have very thin yarn and um, big needles because then it gets kind of loose and um, yeah so I'm really, really pleased. Um, the only thing that um, if you have a tight gauge and then have to go up a size, you have way more stitches um, than you would usually have for your size. But um, it doesn't bother me too much. It went quickly enough. And now for the sleeves, um, I'm knitting it on my short circulars. <laughs> Still not used to it. Um, completely but um yeah I mean I can manage and for the most part you're knitting this sweater from the inside um and so from the inside it's mostly knit stitches with one purl stitch in between and it shows up beautifully on the um right side um and I, oh, I don't remember if I did that here. Maybe I wrote it down. Um, 
Yes, so for the ribbing, the ribbing has also worked from the inside out, um, but the ribbing is twisted. So that means that usually for a twisted rib, you would work on the right side and then you would knit the um, knit stitch twisted. But now because you do it on the inside, you need to knit the purl or you need to work the purl stitch twisted. And uh, yeah, <laughs> that was not so fun. Um, um, and I think, you know, I think I might have done it that way for the uh, body, but I think that I might have switched, like I uh, turned around for the, um, for the ribbing on the sleeves. Yeah, twisted pearls. <laughs> I mean, I can do it, but um, I mean, I prefer not. So, uh, and especially because uh, the cast off. Yeah, so I think I worked from the inside on the uh, body um, and you know I, I got through the ribbing I don't know I think I was watching a movie, movie or something and uh, then I got to the cast off and the cast off just didn't look that nice from the inside out so then I switched back to the right side and did the cast off with the right side facing since that was just much better um, and I used uh, Lori's Twisty Bind Off. So Lori's is L-O-R-I. And um, yeah, her bind off, Lori's Twisty Bind Off is just really nice for ribbing. Oh, and uh, just I just want to mention if the video is blurry, because that might happen with uh, live videos, you can hover. Um, I'm just going to try it on my mouse. So, um, on my laptop. You can hover over the video and click the uh, little settings wheel and then you can choose the quality because usually um, it says automatic or something and then sometimes it will go really low quality. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. Uh, let's see, Bridget asks, have you weighed your yarn on the sleeve so you're sure you have enough for the end? Um, I did that with two colors um, and uh, I figured if I do that with the first two colors I'm gonna do for the sleeves and if it works for those then it's gonna be enough for um, the other colors so what I did is uh, I did not weigh them because um, I have a scale but it's not super super accurate um, so <laughs> I just um, well, I've wound all of these now, but I took the mini and then do I have a mini here? Not really, but um, okay. So imagine a mini skein and you unwind it. So you have one big loop and then I counted the strands of the mini skein and there were 51 uh, or 52. Um, so I divided that in half. So I used half of the mini for the body and half of it would become two sleeves. So uh, the 52, I divided it um, in 26 and then 13, 13, if you can follow uh, that. So I, um, and for mini skeins, I usually don't bother with getting the yarn swift. I just um, put it around my knees. <laughs> so I sit up like this. It's kind of a nice cardio exercise. <laughs> So, so I pull up my knees, unwind uh, the mini, put it uh, around my knees, and then um, so for the first 26 strands, I just and I just counted the whole way, and then cut off that ball, and that would be my um, uh, main body ball, <laughs> the yarn that I use for the main body. Um, that was just because uh, when yarn shop owner once told me that the yarn that you're going to use for the body is probably going to be the yarn that you use for both sleeves too. So I have 50% of the yarn for the body and then the rest I just wound up 13 for one sleeve and 13 for one uh, for the other sleeve. And because I tally all of the rounds so I could replicate it exactly for the other sleeve um, 
that way I, I knew that, okay, you know, the stitch count isn't going to change. If, um, if this ball is enough for the sleeve, then it's going to be enough for the other sleeve. And um, so I did that for two of the mini skeins. And after that, uh, I knew it was, it was going to be enough. So then I just wound one entire ball and just knit the body with that first and then knit the sleeves with it. Uh, so that is what I did. Uh, for the tallying, of the, the keeping track, I just put a, you know, a tally stripe for the body. And then uh, I wanted to use the same color sequence for the sleeve. So I just put a little X underneath each stripe uh, for the first sleeve, and now for the second sleeve, I'm highlighting uh, which row I've done. So yeah, um, sorry I'm motivating too, because you see exactly how many rows um, we have left. Um, and I've never done this before for um, two sleeves. And before I was always like kind of measuring them like, hmm, like how much further do I need to go and <laughs> uh, same as if I knit socks I just put them together and see like hmm, okay they're kind of the same but now I will know exactly and also exactly on which row I decrease so that is um, yeah just really nice to keep track of it that way right so just a little bit more to go and this time I think I will have it finished uh, for the next podcast episode. So hopefully you'll see me wearing it next time. I will put it back in the basket now. Okay. Okay, yeah, so that was lovely to work on while uh, watching Netflix, basically. That was my holiday watched a lot of Netflix um, because, you know, it is just ribbing. It's not a really uh, complicated pattern, so you can um, watch TV. And um, I think I'm going to go through that later because I want to I wanna talk a bit about the Netflix shows that I watched, but I think I do that after I show you all of my knitting. So next up is the... Um, oh, wait. Next up is the progress board. Um, so, I don't know, I think <laughs> maybe like 90% done because I only have a little bit of the sleeve. What do you guys think? 90%? I don't know how much of a delay is on the comments. I'll just take a sip. Yes, 90%. I'll do that. Ta-da! <laughs> 59. <laughs> uh, 59, no, 95. I always mix those two up. Um, I'll just leave it like this. I mean, it's not too accurate anyway. Good morning! <laughs> So it's the afternoon here. I hope we still have enough daylight. Um, but I wanted to do it as late as I could so that uh, most of my friends could join. Um, yes, yeah, so the next up is my pixelated Cardi. And um, I've left it. Um, I've left it how it is. Um, because I think I'm going to need to frog it. Yeah, let me let me just grab it. So this is my pixelated cardigan so far. I finished the body, which is kind of curling up, but still needs um, an edging. But um, yeah, we'll see about that. But um, yeah, I did the sleeve and um, it's going to be too big. <laughs> I can't, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try on so you can see. 
I was skeptical of the pattern because in the pattern they say if you are between sizes knit the smaller size and I did not believe them because what does a designer know right <laughs> why should I trust the designer that's oh. I always I hate it when people do this to my patterns because I say like I told you so and now I did not trust the designer so yeah but yeah <laughs> So, um, last time, ugh, the needles keep banging on my chair. So last time, I'll just stick them in here. There. Uh, last time I had the, uh, both sleeves on stitch holders and I thought, whoa, they look, um, like I'm about to take off. Like, they look like parachutes. And, um... I thought, yeah, it's it's gonna be fine uh, when I, you know, uh, start decreasing for the arms. Um, and you know, I um, I have taken more stitches to the sleeve than uh, the pattern says because uh, in my experience, uh, my arms are bigger than. Um, than is regular for my size, uh, so for my bus size. Um, so I thought, okay, because uh, I knew the body was probably gonna be too big because I knit the bigger size. Um, so I thought, okay, I can hit two birds with one stone here. I can make more room for my arms and I can take some stitches from my body. Um, yes, that was the theory and here is the execution. I. <laughs> So I went on uh, to knit the sleeve and uh, yes, can you, can you say this? It's like, it's like I have this uh, muscular <laughs> uh, wrestler arm. So um, yeah, I think it's somewhat has to do with uh, that I used three strands here, but also it's, it's just too big. Um, I'm just gonna scoop my chair back because also the body is just it just it could be smaller so uh, I think I'm gonna have to rip back and do the um, smaller size what especially hurts though <laughs> uh, is that I've already woven in all of the ends so on all of the stripes I've already sewn in all of the ends. <sighs> yeah, exactly, Marika, I, I won't wear it if it doesn't fit, so yeah. <laughs> and there is so much precious yarn going into this sweater. I mean, um, the wool and the gang yarn, you know, it, it was expensive, sure, but um, I bought it a few years ago, so now, I, now I'm like, okay, I just want to use it. Um, and, uh, yeah, but the hand spun, I'm just, I'm just happy because, um, usually if you, um, oh, I'm using needle size 12 millimeter, Bridget. um, <laughs> yeah, it's an advertisement for being lazy, yes. So I usually, I usually am very lazy and I just wear my garments without even sewing in the ends. <laughs> But for this time, I thought I'm going to be a good girl and I'm going to weave in those ends. Um, yes. So uh, what I was going to say, usually if you uh, weave in your ends and, you know, you, you snip off the excess. Um, and if you then go to undo it and you knit it again, then you will not have enough yarn. Uh, but now, since I'm knitting the a size smaller, I think I will have enough. So at least that is going my way. Um, yeah, no more being a good, a good girl. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, but um, yeah, it's just, it's sad, but um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna undo it and then knit the size smaller as the pattern said was the better option. Yes. Um, 
So, but I just wanted to show you because, yeah, this is just, mm, I, I'm actually also reconsidering if I want to be using this yarn again for the new version because I have not decreased in this round, yet it looks like I have. Um, I think it might also be that um, this is worked in rows and the sleeves are worked in the round. And um, of course, both are stockinette, but stockinette knit flat. Uh, usually you have a looser gauge than if you knit stockinette in the round. So uh, I think that's why this is a bit tighter uh, as well. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> oh, let me catch up with your comments. Uh, thank God that I don't listen to you with weaving in your ends at the same time. <laughs> I've never said that in my defense. I've never said that to weave and ends while you're um, knitting a project. Um, yeah, exactly. I want to end up with a cardigan that I'll actually wear. So, um, yeah. So, one last look at the cardigan before it's going to the frog pond. I do really like the colors, especially this one. Let me show you. Yeah, I do really like them. <laughs> okay, so that's it. I'm gonna frog it and then we will see next time. But now, <laughs> Yeah, it looks like a balloon sleeve, right? Yeah, but which was not my intention, but uh, could be very fashionable. Um, yes, I know, it'll be worth it in the end. So, um, I think I'm gonna have to uh, undo my progress there. <laughs> I don't have any cloth though, um, or maybe, let's see. Kind of works. Ah. Uh... <laughs> okay, well, now we start over and I can fill in my progress again, and that will be very motivating. And I mean, this took literal hours to knit, so it shouldn't be that bad. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so um, that was my pixelated cardi. Um, just to recap, the pixelated cardi is a pattern by Knit Collage, and I'm slightly hacking the pattern because uh, the original pixelated cardi has uh, some kind of collar work at the top. I'm not doing that, I'm just doing stripes. And um, so I still haven't decided if I want to continue the stripes on the sleeves as well. Um, or if I want to do it plain. So, um, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yes, let's move on to my next project. Um, I think I'm going to show you some, so I'm going to show you my scrappy sock in a minute, but before I show you, I'm going to show you some other socks, um, that I have darned. So I am preparing a new masterclass um, for this year that will be called Darn It. Um, <laughs> it's going to be visible mending. Um, so whenever you have a hole in, uh, in your sock or wherever, then um, I have some techniques that you can um, mend it. So it will be called Darn It. Uh, and um, I had some pairs of socks that had holes in them. I don't know if it was the moths, because I do have uh, a moth problem. <laughs> um, so it could have been the moths, or it could have been uh, my spin dryer. Um, I hand wash my socks and then I put them in the spin dryer. And when I found these holes, they had just been in the spin dryer uh, without any bag surrounding them so I think they might have just snagged on um, 
on something in the spin dryer, uh, but it could have also been moths. So anyway, there were holes in them and uh, I have now mended those holes. I have darned them. <laughs> and um, I really like darning, actually. Um, especially on gifted socks, because it means that the recipient has really worn them. Now, for these, the, these weren't uh, wearing... Um, um, yeah, it wasn't that I've worn them so much that they had a hole here, but uh, if I've mended heels before and I just, uh, yeah, it, it shows that an item is well loved, well worn, and um, yeah, I just uh, love that. So, um, so I like to add in a new color and patch it up. And I'm actually unsure if I used to wear these socks with the pearl side out or with the knit side out. But um, yeah, here is the patch on sock number one. I've used two different colors, uh, just sock yarn leftovers. I have a, some um, Metropolis leftovers. And yeah, I just really like using that. So this was um, uh, kind of a duplicate stitching technique. And so I did that in two colors. And here uh, on my beloved striped and stranded socks, I was gutted when I found the hole. Um, <clears throat> sorry, I have to drink something. So the hole was in the color work. And I thought, no. Um, but so I left it for a few months <laughs> and then uh, last week I thought I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix this. Uh, so the white yarn had broken. So I've replaced the white yarn with purple. I've also duplicate stitched this mostly. And then I left the green yarn because uh, I checked on the inside and the green yarn was intact. So I thought, okay, there is no reason why I should duplicate stitch over the green yarn as well. And that way I could leave the color work intact for a little bit. The green yarn has been pulled in here. But um, yeah, <gasps> is that another hole? No. <laughs> okay. So, um, yes, that is, so that's the same technique, but it is in color work. Um, so it's the same as this. And then on my wild strawberry socks, two holes. And one was in the ribbing. So, um, yeah. I just, I, re I really don't know. I just, I hope it wasn't the moths, but yeah, it just, it could have been. So for this one, I don't know how to duplicate stitch um, ribbing. So I just picked up stitches here and I just knit a piece. So I was knitting a piece separately from my sock <laughs> and um, Oh my god, is there a drop stitch here? <gasps> no. I'll have to investigate later. Um, so I had just this little piece of separately knit fabric and then I just sewed that on on all sides. So it's a little bit bulky and sure it's not stretchy anymore, but um, it's fine. Um, and then the other hole, I did some weaving which was really fun. And I wanted to show you the hole on the inside, but you can't really see. Um, yeah, it was just a tiny hole. But um, yeah, for weaving, and um, usually when you see people do that, they leave um, some space around it. And then um, 
needed. <laughs> so yeah, but it was really fun to do. So now I can wear these three pairs of socks again. And then when I was finished with this darning, I found two more pairs with holes. So um, one is this pair, which uh, has a hole here, which has not uh, happened while wearing. So I think it's also moths or the spin dryer. So there's a hole here. Or maybe I just snagged on something, maybe in my shoe. I don't know. It just, there's a variety of reasons. So, um, so I'm gonna darn this as well. I might leave this for my uh, master class so I have an actual piece to work on uh, in the videos. And I have, this is actually my very first pair of socks. Um, these are Hermione Everyday Socks and I knit them cuff down. Um, and I used Katia yarn, I think. And uh, now let's find the hole. It is in the sole somewhere. There it is. So I didn't find this. Um, I, I think I think I might have also worn this with the hole in, but because the sock is so old, um, I think it might have felt it already. So the hole is here. So it's very similar. It's just one little thread that went, mm, yeah, snap. Yeah. So I still have to darn those. Yeah, but um, actually, yeah, I find that really fun. So let me know if you've ever darned something. Um, either in the live chat or if you're watching this later in the comments below and if you like the idea of the darn it masterclass because <laughs> i sure like it um and now i and now for my scrappy socks or sock i have finished the first sock and um you can see that i've um, I've only picked up two extra stitches for the leg, but um, it looks noticeably wider. Oh, you guys have never darned anything. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I'll be delighted to teach you. I mean, it's really, really fun, especially if you use a lot of colors. Um, and I will be using contrasting colors in the tutorials. So you can really see it, what I'm doing. Um, and uh, yeah, so you can see that the leg is a little bit wider than the foot. Um, um, yeah, because I thought it would be a little bit too tight, so I added some stitches. Um, I knit the um, heel and cuff in one color. Oh, bye, Simon. <laughs> see you next time. <laughs> um, and yeah, the rest is all striped, and I will have a new tutorial up on Monday on my Patreon page. And this is an early access tutorial for my patrons. So they'll have access to it first. And then after a couple months, um, I'll upload it to my YouTube channel as well. And the tutorial um, shows you how to weave in ends, lots of ends, um, but I weave them in while knitting them. So, um, yeah, it's just really easy. You don't need uh, a sewing needle. Um, you just weave them in while knitting. Um, I did sew in the ends for the toe and for the heel because uh, having both techniques, you know, both doing the heel uh, and or um, increasing stitches and juggling the technique, it was a little bit too much. So, um, um, yeah, I've used it for the foot and for the leg, um, 
and I've changed color quite a lot. I've uh, changed color every three rounds. You could, um, obviously, you could just uh, knit scrappy socks with five different colors. Um, because usually the idea of a scrappy sock is that you knit until you run out of a scrap. And if you... <laughs> it's caught on the basket. Um, and if you have these scraps... Okay, I've, I've lost one. Like, this will last you a long time. Um, <laughs> so now, you know, I had these leftover yarns from my uh, Around the World sweater, which I, um, you know, this is only uh, a part of it. Um, yeah, they're great, aren't they, the colors? Um, so there are 80 colors. Um, some of them I, I used up entirely in the uh, sweater. Um, and some of them I have now used up in the sock because I only had a little bit left. Um, but the idea of a scrabby sock is that you can use a very small amount of yarn, um, like I might do that for my um, Spectre sweater leftovers. Um, but you can just use a very small amount of yarn and then knit a scrappy pair of socks. And usually you will have like big chunks like this bit um, with one color. But I thought, okay, why not? <laughs> why not go big? So I did um, only three rounds per color, uh, so it had a lot of ends. So um, yeah, I made it a little bit difficult for myself. Um, but yeah, and um, I just finished this two days ago, I think. Uh, I wove in, or um, yeah, I wove in the, the last few ends. And uh, then I blocked it, and this is the side where I, you know, knitted in all of the ends and I don't know if the video quality will show you but um, you can see that it's a little bit uneven in some places especially here but so uh, this is where I did not use my technique yet so um, yeah I, yeah yeah, it's, um, it's kind of the same technique, but in a different space, so, or in a different spot. So here you can see some kind of irregularity in the, in the stripes. And uh, here, that is gone, but you can still sometimes see the color behind um, the fabric. Yeah, so it's not too visible. But then if you look at the other side, you think, oh, wow, that's that's a difference. Um, yeah. And I kind of went to a different color um, theme because uh, this was very um, children's book ish. And I really like it. And then here. Um, I don't know. This is very. I love this. Um, oh, and can, can you see the ice cream sandwich here? <laughs> Strawberry vanilla chocolate. <laughs> um, and then, um, yeah, I went uh, under the sea. So, yeah, it was a bit more grown up, this. Um, yeah, and uh, I will have the color um, sequence. I've written it all down. Um, <laughs> now I want ice cream, yeah. <laughs> Me too. Uh, so I've written all of the uh, colors down and um, um, yeah, I, I still have to think about in what format I will release that. I think I will just write up a pattern, a uh, PDF pattern for this and include the uh, color sequence there. Um, I'm not saying that you should get and uh, that you should go and buy 80 colors for your socks, but um, if you would say really like these colors, then you can take that color sequence and use it for something else, um, which is what I'm gonna do. This is basically my designer swatch sock, so um, I can look at it and say like, ooh, these colors go together really nicely. I'm gonna use those for a blanket. See? So, 
that's how I'm gonna use this color sequence. But um, yeah, I'll just put it in there because I know that um, some people have the um, uh, Metropolis mini pack too. I believe it's not no longer available i'm not sure if they're gonna um discontinue it i'm not sure um we will see but for the people who have it you know this is a great scrappy project and i was thinking is um um do you guys want to do a scrappy knit along or scrappy crochet along scrappy mal scrappy make along um, would that be fun? Like I could, um, write a blog post and, um, give you a few ideas for scrappy projects and then we could all scrap along. <laughs> would you guys like that? Let me know. Um, and I'll be working up the second, um, sock of this pair. And then I think I will, uh, make another scrappy pair because they are just so fun. Um, yeah, so the uh, tutorial for this method will be on my Patreon page on Monday. Uh, I was editing it this morning and, um, um, but you don't, um, you can also use your favorite method. You don't have to do that. Um, yes, but if you have a lot of scraps or, um, if you have a mini set, a mini set is really nice for socks or maybe for a shawl or, yeah. So that would be fun. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, let's see if I have anything else that I want to show you. Um, I think that that was everything. So, um, I'm just gonna, um, chat a bit more about, you know, <laughs> other crafty things and maybe you guys want to chat about something. And um, I'm going to tell you what shows I watched the last week on Netflix. And I am going to challenge you, if you've seen them too, to um, say your opinion in six words or less. Okay, so I'm pretty sure we've all watched Bridgerton, right? Um, I might, uh, I might say a spoiler, so if you haven't watched it completely, let me know, or skip a few minutes if you're watching this later, but, um, what do y'all think of Bridgerton? It was, I thought it was so good, I watched it twice. I, I just watched it twice. <laughs> it was, um... You know, I had been watching a lot of um, superhero mo movies and uh, there's just, you know, I, I like Marvel movies, but there's just a lot of fighting and death and <laughs> like if you watch a lot of them um, after each other, um, I just get a little bit depressed. So, um, and Bridgerton was just, you know, nice watching, nice colors. Oh you know, romantic story. Um, yeah. So that was just nice. Okay. So after I completed that, I watched Emily in Paris, <laughs> which was entertaining, but also very cringy. I found at least the first couple episodes. You watched it in a day. <laughs> I have to admit the second time I watched it, I did that in two days. Um, yeah. Oh, you liked Emily in Paris? Yeah, I just, uh, towards the end, I, I liked it. But the first couple episodes, I was like, no. <laughs> Especially how um, the business dude um, is treating her. No. Um, okay, so what do you guys think of Sabrina? Uh, I have watched, I think it's the fourth season now. I've watched all of the previous seasons but um of um what's it called the chilling adventures of sabrina so i really liked it up until now but it's just uh, getting a little bit uh cliche <laughs> it's getting a little bit too much like riverdale for my liking i don't know if you guys feel the same way let me know what you think and also so i watched okay i watched 
Also, uh, Wings Club, I will not call it Fate. It is just Wings Club. <laughs> uh, so Wings Club, Self Made C by Madam C.J. Walker, uh, WandaVision, Lupin, and The Mandalorian. So Wings Club, I thought it was okay. Um, and after it was over, um, I watched another episode of Sabrina. And then I saw that there are um, the actress who plays Dorcas, so one of the Freaky Sisters, um, plays Bloom in Wings Club. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, the fact that there is a Sabrina reboot makes me feel old. Yeah. I mean, do you guys remember the original Harvey Kinkle? I don't even know if he was called Kinkle. But um, yeah, the original Harvey, I think he was my very first celebrity crush. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, and self-made, uh, the story of Madame C.J. Walker, I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Um, WandaVision, I wrote down, eh? Oh, huh? <laughs> it's just a little bit confusing. Oh, so, so WandaVision is on Disney+. Plus. We have a trial right now, so I think it's almost ending, so I can't see the, um, upcoming episodes of WandaVision, but um, yeah, it was um, strange, but now I kind of like it. Uh, and then Lupin, I've watched the first episode, I'm hooked, I just, uh, I really, really like this kind of, um, um, uh, how do you call it, like grand heist things, like um, Oceans, what was the first Oceans, Oceans 11? Um, yeah, WandaVision, right? Cool but confused. That's, yeah, <laughs> that's how to uh, explain this. And then The Mandalorian, yeah, I, I liked it too, but actually I just thought, you know, Baby Yoda is cute. I have spoken. <laughs> uh, but other than Baby Yoda, I just really don't, um, yeah. But I have to explain, you know, I'm, or... Um, I'm not a big Star Wars fan. <laughs> this is the way. <laughs> but even even my boyfriend, who is a big Star Wars fan, he he was not really um, a big fan of the series as well. Um, yeah. So any other series that you think I should be watching? Because um, I've kind of run out of things to watch. I did see a commercial for Netflix that they're gonna have new movies um, every week, like new Netflix original movies. Yes, Queen's Gambit. I love that one. It went Queen's Gambit. It was so good that I wish I could forget about it and watch it again. It's like the same feeling I had with uh, Harry Potter books. <laughs> You're a Star Wars fan. <laughs> American Horror Story. Mm. Yeah, I don't like horror stories. <laughs> Once Upon a Time and Jane the... Oh, yes, Once Upon a Time. I I watched that a long time ago when I was still on TV. Um, and I've watched one episode of Jane the Virgin and... I don't know. It didn't... Um, yeah. I just, I don't know. <laughs> I might watch it again. Dawson's Creek, oh. <laughs> I don't think I've ever watched that. Um, it does make me think of uh, Schitt's Creek, which I wish was on Dutch Netflix. Everyone's raving about it, and I want to see it. But um, yeah. Anyway, and I also finished a book last week. I finished uh, The Book of Dust. Um, so it's a novel by Philip Pullman, who also did the uh, His Dark Materials series. And no, I haven't watched the HBO um, series. I really want to watch it. Um, so I've, I've read His Dark Materials, the, the trilogy of that. So Northern Lights, uh, Subtle Knife, and Amber Spyglass. And... And now I'm reading the trilogy, The Book of Dust, which I did not realize was a trilogy. 
So I bought two books thinking that that was it. I read the first book, which was called La Belle Sauvage, and then the second book, um, which is called The Secret Commonwealth. And I thought that that was the final book. <laughs> and I was like up to the last 20 pages and I thought, how are they going to explain all of this in these 20 pages? And then on the last page it said, to be concluded. I'm like, no! Oh, 1.30 a.m. in the morning, I was like, I'm going to finish this book. And then, yeah. And the third book of the trilogy um, is not out yet. And also the release date is not yet announced. Um, oh, what's this? A Mandalorian side quest. Side quest DeLorean. What? The dude helps too many people why he should be in a hurry all the time. Oh, this! So, um, if you haven't watched The Mandalorian, it's about... Ugh, I don't even know how to explain this as a non-Star Wars fan. So I kind of see it as like a soldier. <laughs> or, or, yeah, someone that you can hire for help. And he has one job. You had one job. Bring baby Yoda home. And then... Um, you know, he tries to do that, but then these people cross his path and every episode is the same. It's like, oh, you want this? First, you got to help me with this. And then the whole episode is about that thing. Yeah, and it was just like, oh, this whole world is very, um, I don't, I don't know if I should call it capitalist, but it was like, oh, I won't do, I wouldn't do that for nothing. You have to help me with this. <laughs> Like, the people in that world aren't very generous. Nope. <laughs> anyway, okay. I think, um, you know, if you want to let me know any series that I should watch or any movies, I'm really looking forward to the um, Moxie, I don't know if it's a series or a movie, on Netflix uh, that was directed by uh, Amy Poehler. Um, yes, I think I'm going to love that. And... I think I should cut it short before I talk about this for another hour. Um, but yes, we have, we still have enough daylight. So, um, because I won't be able to edit this um, episode. So usually when we lose daylight, I'm able to edit in a little bit uh, more brightness. But um, yes. Okay. So thank you everyone for joining. If you have any questions for me while I'm here, just type them in the chat um, so that I'm still able to read them. Um, it's just one more day left before the weekend and uh, actually this weekend we are already celebrating Chinese New Year. So actually Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year is happening next week, February 12th. Um, but, you know, I have already ordered all of the stuff and then we're gonna do it this weekend. Um, I still celebrated because I lived in China for a year. I studied Chinese. Um, yeah. And there's this one web shop here in the, in the Netherlands and you can order all of these authentic Chinese stuff. Um, it's, um, so... We are going to do a hot pot this uh, this weekend and we are allowed one guest so I'm inviting my brother and um, yeah it's going to be a lot of fun. So we all, we're going to have uh, those um, tiny meat rolls that you can just dip in the hot pot and I have different sauces and things. It's the first time we're doing hot pot by ourselves. <laughs> um, Oh, Mike asks, how is the knitting going for your boyfriend? Is he still knitting? No. <laughs> um, he knit a hat when we were in Edinburgh. That was in 2019, so already two years ago in March. Um, and after that, he started on a sock, but it's like he is, he's past the toe now. So he's on to the fun bit, right? He's on to the just TV knit part, but then he was like, eh. Um, so no, he's not knitting anymore. <laughs> oh, um, Michelle asked if we had a lot of snow. 
oh, we did have a lot of snow a couple days ago, uh, and it really stayed like for the whole day. Um, so that was fun. But then the day after it was all gone. <laughs> and I think, I don't know, I think it might snow again. I'm not sure. Or it was gonna rain. I don't know. The weather stuff. I don't know about the weather stuff. Um, we also went out uh, bird watching. Yeah, my boyfriend is a really avid bird watcher. So um, for his next birthday, he's uh, saving up for um, um, a telescope. Uh, not the telescope that you use to watch stars, but that you use to watch birds. And there is one. Um, there's one where you can link your telephone, <laughs> telephone, your mobile phone, so you can take pictures through the telescope, which is really cool. So yeah, that's uh, that's basically you know our weekends, um, knitting or walking or bird watching. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, I think I am going to go and uh, I'll make sure that this all uploads uh, nicely and then just one more day before the weekend and then I will see you all next week again and uh, I think I'm just going to do live podcasts every month, I think maybe the first week of every month. Um, because I don't want to go live every week because it is quite uh, nerve-wracking for me still. So um, <laughs> even though you guys are being super, super nice. Uh, so thank you all so much for coming here with me. <laughs> thank you for joining me chatting and chatting with me. Thank you guys. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Let's see if I can... And this life. Yes. Okay. Bye-bye.